Chapter 5 Quinny The boy stares back at me like he's never seen a girl before. I'm about to keep talking to him, but then I hear Daddy's knuckles knock on my door. Daddy, come look. There's a boy next door. A real live boy. I yank him over to my window, but that boy is gone. He was there. He really was. Honest. I believe you, Quinny, says Daddy. His name is Hopper. It is? His mother just came by to welcome us. She did? She was also wondering if you wanted to go over there and meet Hopper. I jump up so fast that I almost fall down. The answer is yes. We hurry next door. Hopper's house looks just like the gingerbread house I decorated in school last year. He's lucky he gets to live in a tasty dessert house, not a stinky red barn house. Hopper's mom welcomes us in and starts talking to Daddy, and I wait for Hopper to start talking to me too, but he just stands there, hiding behind his scruffy hair and peeking out at me with two big looking, looking eyes. His forehead is crinkled and his mouth is tiny, and I can tell he's trying to be brave. I can tell it is not working. I know with shy dogs you're supposed to move slowly and speak gently and let them sniff your hand first. Same with my shy humans, except for the sniffing. Hi, Hopper. Remember me? I'm Quinny. We just met in our rooms, and I'm very, very, extra very glad to meet you again. Even though you're shy, I'm not shy, but some people are, and that's okay. I'm just really excited to live next door, and you're not as old as Mrs. Porridge. Hopper stares at me. His mom pushes him forward a little. I'm Hopper, he says barely. Then he stares at something on my head that isn't my eyes. Is that your real hair? It is, I tell him. My mom thinks it's beautiful. Hopper doesn't say if he agrees with mom or not. A lump bumps up in my throat. You do have fabulous hair, Quinny, says Hopper's mom. Hopper, would you like to show Quinny your room? Hopper doesn't answer, but his mom pushes him along. I follow him upstairs and almost crash into him as he stops suddenly by a closed door. He blocks that door with his whole body. Then he stares at my head again. What are those holes in your cheeks? He asks. Top of page 28. Then he stares at my head again. What are those holes in your cheeks? He asks. Another lump bumps in my throat. What holes, I ask, but Hopper doesn't explain. The next thing he says is, how many teeth do you have? I don't know, but that's a good question. So I open my mouth and we count them. Number of teeth in my mouth equals 22. Then we count Hopper's teeth. Number of teeth in Hopper's mouth, 22, two. Oh, wow, Hopper, we have the exact same number of teeth. How cool is that? Do you have any loose ones? I still have two wiggly ones that are almost about to fall out. Please don't shout so loud up my nose, Hopper says. Sorry, I step back an inch. Is that better? Hopper doesn't answer this question, so I ask another one. What's behind that door you're blocking? Body parts, answers someone else. It's a big boy talking now, a bulky bully-faced boy holding a soccer ball as he stomps down the hall toward us. He bounces that ball off of Hopper's forehead. Ouch! Then a second bully boy, with the exact same face as the first one, shows up and shoves Hopper's shoulder. Dead, rotting body parts, he snorts, sneering at me. I wouldn't go in there if I were you. Well, you're not me, I say. Now, could you please stop bothering my friend? You're what? Both bully boys laugh. Ha! They bounce that ball off Hopper's head again. My friend, I repeat, and how would you like it if someone threw a ball at your face? Hopper as a girlfriend, Hopper as a girlfriend. Those bullies make kissy poo noises and mean laughing snorts. Then they grab Hopper and flip him upside down and swing him around. He doesn't look too happy about it. Leave him alone. I pound a big bully arm and push a big bully stomach but his two-headed bully monster swats me away like I'm just some pesky little girl. Well, I am not just some pesky little girl. Those bully heads don't realize it, 
but I'm a Taekwondo green belt. They have no idea what I do to earn that green belt. Believe me, it was not pretty. If they knew, they would be afraid. Very, very, extra, very afraid. I get into my fighting stance. I pretend I'm back at my dojang in New York City. I front kick a strong, fast foot, and I scream my spirit scream, Kiap! and thwack. I kick that soccer ball right out of bully head number one's arms, and it flies through the air and down the hall and down the stairs. Then I hear the crash and smash of something hard breaking into a million pieces. Uh-oh. The louder something sounds when it breaks, the more expensive it usually is. That two-headed bully monster lets go of Hopper and glares down at me with fireballs of meanness shooting out of its four eyeballs. You're gonna get it, growls Bullyhead number one. You're dead meat, snarls Bullyhead number two. Wrong. I'll scream like a scared little baby and you'll be the ones in trouble. Quinny, what's going on here? I turn around. It's Daddy. He looks at me, half confused and half suspicious. Hopper's mom rushes up the stairs behind Daddy, and she cries, Trevor? Ty? Your grandmother's vase is broken. How many times have I told you? No playing ball in the house. Top of page 32. We didn't, roars bullyhead number one. That girl broke it, rules, roars bullyhead number two. She kicked the ball right out of my arms. Everyone looks at me. I try to smile, all sweet and innocent. Just a harmless little girl. But there's one problem. P.U. Piper. I have no idea how she even got here. But my four-year-old twit sister is suddenly sitting on the stairs. And she squawks. It's true. Quinny hitted those boys and kicked their ball. That sneaky little thing was spying on me this whole time. Hitted is not a word, I point out. I saw the whole thing, she says. Saw it isn't a word either. Learn to speak English. Quinny, please, says Daddy. Is it true? Did you kick that ball down the stairs? No. And even if I did, it was only because those big bullies made kissy-poo noises and tried to scare me with dead, rotting body parts. And then they turned Hopper upside down and... Daddy tries to interrupt me, but my engine is running too fast to stop. And they wouldn't cut it out, so I had no choice because the Sabom at my dojang always says we need to build a better, more peaceful world, which means you shouldn't hold people upside down by their ankles and spin them around without their permission, right? Hopper's mom looks totally confused now, so I fill her in. I happen to be a Taekwondo green belt, which is the belt right after yellow with a green stripe and right before green with a blue stripe. For my belt test, I broke a giant thick piece of wood in two with just my bare foot. I show Hopper's mom a strong, elegant sidekick. She moves out of the foot's way. That's, well, that's very interesting, Quinny, she says. Thank you for sharing. I, I'm sorry about your vase. I also share. Daddy tells Hopper's mom that we will pay for the vase. I don't know why, because none of this is my fault in the first place. Hopper's mom says that is out of the question. And then she turns to her own kids and says, Boys, I'm disappointed in you. All three of you. This isn't how we behave with guests. You'll spend the rest of the afternoon in your rooms thinking about how to use better manners. What? Wails bullyhead number one. No fair, howls bullyhead number two. Hopper is the only one who doesn't look upset to be stuck in his room for the rest of the day. I don't understand that boy. To your rooms, now, Hopper's mom says. And no video games either. The bully twins glare at me with tiny, meany eyes. One of them growls, and the other whisper shouts, Dead meat. I stick closely to Daddy, who's a lot bigger than they are. He picks up Piper and pulls me toward the stairs by my shirt sleeve. Let's go, girls. His voice sounds like he has a headache. Bye, Hopper. I wave back at him with a smile. See you soon. But Hopper doesn't wave or smile or anything. He scowls at me like I've got cooties. Then he scurries into his room and slams the door. I guess he hates me now. For some reason, I guess I didn't make a new friend after all. As we walk away from Hopper's house, Piper makes that smirky, sneaky smile that she always makes when I'm in trouble. 
Tattletale for sale, I call out. Tattletale for sale. Twenty, please, Daddy sighs. I cannot believe what happened back there. Neither can I. You'll help to pay for that broken vase out of your allowance. But it wasn't my fault. I was just standing there doing my own life when those bullies started bugging Hopper, so I tried to help him because I thought he was my friend, but I was wrong. He's not my friend. That boy hates me, which is fine because it's a free country. So let's just move on, shall we? There's a sniffle in my nose, but I'm not letting it out for some boy who hates me. Not going to happen.